Okay, how many of you have heard about insurgent candidates this year? A show of hands, please. Excellent. We have heard a lot about Bernie Sanders and Donald Trump in particular, and both have enjoyed a large share of media attention and popular support in 2016. Sanders nearly tied Hillary Clinton this week in the Iowa Democratic caucuses, and Donald Trump finished second place, second to Ted Cruz, with a high turnout Republican caucus. But what do we know more broadly about the role of insurgent candidates in primary campaigns? Insurgent candidates are a regular component of the presidential primary environment. In fact, two types of candidates typically emerge. Mainstream candidates are typically more ideologically moderate. They usually enjoy support of party leadership and they are typically considered to be more viable, meaning they're more likely to go on to win the nomination and the general election. Insurgent candidates, on the other hand, are typically more ideologically extreme. They enjoy little to no support from party leadership and they are typically typically considered to be long shots, meaning they have very, a very slim chance of winning the nomination. This is a small sample of mainstream and insurgent candidates that are more well known. It is crowded and it is intended to be. The moral of the story is that both types of candidates exist on both sides of the aisle in every election season. This will happen in a two-party system where there is necessarily great variety under each party umbrella. But do insurgent candidates move on to win the nomination in a general election? An important question this year. Not usually. Barry Goldwater was the last Republican insurgent to win the nomination and move on to the general election in 1964. He was very ideologically conservative and beat out other moderate Republicans to win the nomination in that year. As you can tell from the general election results, he lost handedly to, Barry, or to Lyndon Johnson in 1964. So there's a cautionary tale here for 2016. On the Democratic side, Barack Obama started out in the 2008 primary campaign as an insurgent candidate relative to Hillary Clinton. He was a first-term U.S. Senator and a fresh face in the national spotlight. He was not as ideologically liberal as, say, a Bernie Sanders, and he was able to gain momentum and eventually win the nomination and the general election. So what does this mean for 2016? To win in either party, a candidate must have a broad enough reach across all 50 states to amass enough delegates to secure the nomination. Right now, Hillary Clinton has more support from minority voters, which will help her in the primary calendar later on. Bernie Sanders is doing well among young people and white voters. He is also more ideologically liberal than Clinton, which may make it harder for him to w build this broad support. Cruz appeals to conservative Republicans, Trump more moderate Republicans, and as of today, Rubio more moderate, uh, more mainstream Republicans. The question remains, can any of these Republicans build enough, broad, enough of a broad coalition to win the nomination? In any case, candidates with a strong ground operation will have an advantage in turning out the vote. Clinton is more established and experienced in running a 50-state campaign, which could ultimately help her. Cruz currently has a more organized ground operation, more so than Trump or Rubio, and he did a very good job of turning out Republicans to the Iowa caucuses on Monday. So, who will win this year? Stay tuned.